Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do a little unboxing and testing of our new solder pot. I picked this pot up to tin the ends of the wires we use in many of our rail dig products. Tinning the ends of fine wires holds the individual wire strands together and actually improves the electrical connection to the connectors we use. Working with fine wires can be frustrating if they're not tinned as the wires can separate giving a frayed appearance. When the wires are properly tinned, they're just easier to work with and can improve the electrical and physical connection, as you can see here. Let's have a look at what I bought, starting off with the liquid rosin flux. In short, soldering flux is a cleaning and flowing agent that will help the liquid solder wick into our stranded wires. You could think of the flux as a social lubricant between the wire and the solder. It helps the two feel more comfortable with each other. Next up is our one pound bar of solder. Now I don't know how much I'll actually need for our solder pot, but the one pound bar seems pretty common when solder shopping. I went with a 6337 solder, that's 63% tin, 37% lead. I've read where the transition from fluid to solid is about near instant with this solder blend, so I thought I'd give it a try. And now we get to the main attraction of the video, the solder pot. Since this is my first pot, I went with one of the inexpensive models I found on Amazon. I'll include links below in the description. These were about $15 last year, in 2019, but they've all seemed to jump in price this year. I paid $25 for this model. Uh, this included paperwork is not going to be overly useful for me, so I guess I'll wing it on how high to set the pot's temperature. We're all seeing this pot for the first time here, so I'm just having a look around, getting a feel for the build quality. It has a very simple set of controls, an on-off switch and a temperature setting dial. It does have a nice beefy grounded power cord, but overall I'm really surprised at just how light this unit feels. I'm guessing this wraparound bit is just there to hide the internals of the pot. It kind of feels like a thin Coke can, but I'm still feeling optimistic. There's an add-on 100 watt label attached here. Uh, they sell this in several power variations, so that's okay. And as you can see, it's also good to know it's minimum temperature and it's man temperature. They're both clearly marked. Well, I will be feeling pretty manly melting metal, so that's good. This pot design is sold with a smaller and larger diameter pot. This is the smaller diameter at about an inch and a quarter wide. And as I'm going to be using this primarily for tinning wires, this smaller pot made sense. I think I would have preferred the power cord to come out of the back of the unit. Uh, less chance of my hand or arm dragging the cord accidentally when it's full of metal, but it'll be easy enough just to turn it around on my bench while using it. I guess I thought this was gonna feel more like a brick. We are melting metal after all. Still, this looks like a popular design, and I'll assume it's up to the task. Just out of curiosity, I thought I'd check and see how much my solder bar and pot weighs before use. Okay, just a shade over one pound on the solder. There's some truth in advertising. The cord of the solder pot weighs about three and a half ounces, and the pot itself, well, that checks in at around 11 and a half ounces. What the heck, I had the scale, might as well use it. It's now time to melt some metal. Honestly, I had no idea how to cut this solder bar into manageable pieces for melting. I figured it was a very soft metal, and frankly, I was surprised at how hard this one pound bar actually was. I started off using a six inch hacksaw from Harbor Freight, thinking this would go through the bar like butter. Well, it turned out more like frozen butter, dipped in solder. Well, I quickly realized I was cutting way too small a piece of solder, and also that this was going to take a minute. so much for my dreams of opening that solder bar cutting business and retiring to Florida. I think we've got to cut bigger chunks and cut them faster. This little $5 hacksaw is very useful, but just not for this job. I grabbed an old beater of a utility saw and hacked my way through the rest of the solder bar. Fortunately, I've spared you that footage. Here are the solder bar chunks I came up with. I set the temperature control on the pot to the 12 o'clock position to start, and I began with this last large piece of the solder bar. I increased the control knob to about the 2 o'clock position, about 15 minutes in. 
I just couldn't resist. I filmed this as a time lapse, hoping it'd look kind of cool when the solder melted. And I kind of think it did. This entire melting process took right around 18 minutes. Once that first large piece was melted, the smaller chunks melted very quickly. Just out of curiosity, once the pot was full, I turned it off to see how fast the solder would solidify. It took around 30 minutes, but the pot was still very, very warm. I was surprised at just how much solder this smaller diameter pot was able to hold. As you can see, I've got just 3.3 ounces of the initial 16 ounces of solder left unused. And of course, now I have the beefy feeling solder pot at one pound and seven ounces. Now we can get down to the business of actually using the solder pot. I filled a small five milliliter bottle with our liquid flux and began dipping these stranded 28 gauge wires in. Initially, I dipped them a bit too far, getting some of the flux on the insulation. The flux will wick up the wire nicely, as I've since realized. I was a little surprised at how much solder dross or slag would build up on the surface. I don't know if this is normal or perhaps it's because it's a new pot. This first time out, I used wooden craft sticks to scrape this dross. Here, we're dipping our stripped and fluxed wires into the pot and I have to say, this is a real joy compared to using a flux pen and a conventional soldering iron to tin these wires. I'm still being a little deliberate tinning these wires, getting a feel for this new tool and being very careful around the liquid metal. I've already picked up quite a bit of speed though in my tinning adventures since I filmed this. Overall, I'd have to say I'm very pleased with this solder pot. I think you can probably get them cheaper than the $25 I paid for this one, but I got mine through Amazon Prime and for the few extra bucks, the two-day delivery was worth it for me as I'm in the middle of a little production run here. And here's another time lapse of the solder going back to a solid. As I mentioned earlier, this took about 30 minutes to get to this point, but the pot was still very warm. Depending on how many wires you need to tin, a solder pot may or may not be in your future. But in either case, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our Railday channel. Help us grow. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.